thing that I talked about, 5e, engage, educate, empower, evolve, enlighten. So, you know, I was trying during the last 14 sessions, silently, without telling you. Now I can tell you. Mm -hmm. So directly or indirectly, you know, you talked about your dad, you talked about the chemicals. It is not to show my knowledge, but my goal was to engage your mind, so that your mind can change the direction. So when it changes the direction, the second E is to educate the mind. So what is the secret of educating the mind? Uh, so that you start working on the mind. Now see, silently I got the message. Then no, I had the moment of uh, anxiety in the office and I overcome. So there are two elements. Not only you educated the mind, but you also, third one, empowered the mind. Oh, stress is outside. Let me empower should not get affected. So it worked due to all those principles. You may not be aware. Now we want to be aware. So the first three people learn during the course of a couple of weeks and sometimes a couple of months. Engage, educate and empower. This is what all the motivate, motivator and the speakers are doing in the world. But if I don't stick to these teachings, then I forget evolution, evolving the mind. So I'll just give a brief of it and then we will go to the question. So evolution of the mind and the fifth E is enlighten the mind. So what is that evolution? Mind by default, as we discussed, is subjected to likes and dislikes, jealousy and hatred, pain and the pleasure. The time comes deeper inside, at the mental level, you are not at all affected by any one of them. Something hurts, you have a pain, but the suffering is not there. The inner, higher state of the mind, I'm okay. Let me take care of this. No worries, no anxiety. Even you are not scared of the death. There is no fear at all. There is a state of fearlessness. So think of the mind that is working in the world having that strength and that power. So evolution means the mind is working totally in a third dimension of life, where the mind constantly knows, experiences and realizes that it is because of the lower nature of the mind I experience stress, anxiety, reaction. I sleep hardly for three and a half hours. I enjoy it. I, I woke up around at four, so it's not a pride, you undergo a transformation inside. That is what the evolution is. So once you reach there and you have a glimpse of it, what happens? You cannot leave the journey. <laughs> you cannot leave the journey. So what is going to happen? You are lying down, the mind says you are tired and you withdraw the mind. The fatigue is gone. I am sleeping better now. Huh? Because when I lay my head on the pillow, I'm not thinking about what happened during the day anymore. It I is, can close my eyes and, you know... It you is know. happening. Yeah. So that is what the evolution, once we pick up, so I picked up a, a couple of the texts and I summarized this. And the fifth is what Buddha, a uh, state of enlightenment. So that is where the mind merges into the self. So what is the journey of the mind? With all the pain and the pleasure and failures and the success, it is like the river that is constantly flowing 
where it merges into an ocean. So what we are, what we teachers and uh, mentors are guiding, that ask the mind to follow the right path so that it can easily merge into an ocean of the pure consciousness, where there is peace, happiness, love, and wisdom. So that is what we say about it. Uh, Enlightenment. So now pick up the question. Seeker knows how to move to a state of relax and calm anytime, anywhere. So not only you are empowering, but you are moving a step ahead. You. I also find myself, uh, because I have a really good friend at work who tends to, she gets very quickly, yeah. you know. So I, I find myself trying to calm her down as soon as I see that she's starting to, you know, uh, to get upset about something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I'm not doing it not only me, but also trying it. Yeah, know. so there's a natural tendency. But to uh, maintain your awareness. Sometimes we see I have achieved, why can't you achieve? So what happens in that push? Something different happens. So we have to maintain that awareness. Mm -hmm. Just do that work, do that good work for the sake of good work. If one is not listening, withdraw yourself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what will happen? It will bounce back. Yes. <laughs> so so yeah. be careful. No, I, 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 she, on Monday, she tried to, to get me to engage into something that we used to do that is really, it's, it's really negative and, uh, and I didn't allow myself to be pulled into it. I didn't, I didn't do what she asked me to do yeah. because I didn't want to, I didn't want to, if I, if I know, if I checked on something, I knew that it was, if, and, and I saw something that I didn't like, that I didn't agree with, I knew that it was going to make me upset. So I thought, why am I even going to do this? Like I need to just completely step away from it and not, and not engage in that. That is the first step and you will learn how to move to the second step. So even if one, is, one doesn't agree, the mind says withdraw and then we learn how to enter again into the same conversation with a different expression, keeping the mind conscious. So as the journey goes, know what is self-discovery by example. I'll briefly touch and then we'll go to the entire practice. So it will be a practice, listening, practice, listening. That is how the, this session will go. <clears throat> you see that there was a great master who used to come here. His name is Yuji Krishnamurti from India. So in his initial days, he went to the same, no, and he mastered. Is there any enlightenment? Yes, there is enlightenment. Is it possible that everyone can reach to that state? The master said, yes, smilingly. Can I take the enlightenment? Yes. Can you take it? Yes. Can you take it? So every master teaches the same thing because they refer the same principles. So the question comes, can you take it? means are you a seeker on the path? So we'll understand what it means by being a seeker. Claudia, you have to remain as a seeker in your entire life. So when I meet you, that I may be a mentor and a guide from outside, but I also become a seeker with you and from there I start the journey. And that is an art that comes when the mind evolves to a little higher stage. So you mean seek enlightenment in others as in help them reach that state? Okay. So, so when I become a seeker, 
I come down to your level, but I'm aware of the higher level, so I go with you, I listen to you, I give you the practice, I customize it, and then you see that, oh, there is a possibility. Uh, in the beginning you saw, oh, yes, I can relax, but, but now that but has gone. <laughs> that but has gone. That is what I see and observe. So, just to give you, so that is one, what is self-discovery? What are the four steps that a qualified seeker knows to permanent peace and happiness? This is one of the most wonderful principles in that once we start the practice, I will delve deeply, but it is the same. To know it. I don't know, let me know. So what to know? Let me know the principle as it is. Uh, see, there are many principles. Peace is my essential nature. Now, I, I learned it, but I'm in anxiety. No, no, first learn the principles. Can you say as it is, the peace is my essential nature? Second step, now to understand it. How to understand? Ask as many questions, what, why, where, who. So, okay, peace is my essential nature, you are saying, but I'm not experiencing the peace because you are experiencing the stress in your superficial nature. But how come that superficial nature has come? It is the mind that created, it is the mind because of the default journey, now you can understand, has created the superficial nature. The mind is habituated, heavily conditioned, huh? Even through the, some, some of the scientific knowledge, you were talking about the chemicals. Mm -hmm. And I gave you uh, a response. So second part is extremely important. One out of... One out of... One hundred thousand people follow the second step. My master said, and I said, no, no, I can do it. And then again I went into stress. <laughs> so that contemplation part is not whatever the thought is coming to your mind and you start thinking and you are carried away. In that step you are consciously working on the mind and then you are consciously one-pointed, focused on peace is my essential nature. So, okay. I come to understand the second topic, superficial nature, nature versus essential nature. Also, what happens? So through the reflection, you know, when the mind, I'm working on the mind, I can move to the essential nature. Thinking is the same. Thoughts are the same. But am I doing it? So that contemplation is an art. It has got five or six different steps that we will <laughs> deal with it. So, second step is, I don't understand, so let me understand. So, that understanding leads to conviction in the mind. What is that conviction piece is my essential nature. Now you have anxiety and the stress, but you have also a conviction that peace is my essential nature. You still experience the anxiety, but still you have a conviction peace is my essential nature. So, what is the third step? The natural third step is the practice and experience it. Oh, I feel, feel little impact, let, so let me do the practice. Oh, I removed it. By practice, by practice. So you learn from your experiences. I'm not doing anything. I'm just pointing you. You are doing the practice. You are experiencing the change. And I'm taking the money without doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> that is the third step. <laughs> and the fourth step that you are established, you are settled in that state. Come what may. So my master used to give a very funny example. Let this world go to hell. I'm in peace and happiness. <laughs> so it, it's not a negative. But through a negative expression, it shows that, you know, whatever is happening in the world outside, it is the source of my stress. 
when I relate to my husband, when I relate to my dad, when I relate to my office, when I relate to my work, when I relate myself to the body. But now that stands no more. The four steps. Ask yourself when in peace or pressure, stress or silence. Yes, if I'm not aware, consciously aware that here the stress is coming, as you were talking about your colleague and uh, she or he was in stress and you were consoling, that is one, and you expressed your point of view that is right and then you stepped back. So that stepping back is the field of awareness. You left everything, what you think about and you withdraw yourself. So that is the knowledge in the mind that happens. That knowledge comes from the first three E, engaging the mind, educating the mind, empowering the mind. If we don't do these three, it will not happen. The next time we will engage into the <laughs> same conflict. Do I know who am I? What is the world? What is the existence? How to live and work? These questions must move in my mind all the time. You just told me my, I don't know whether my husband is ready or not. How these four questions are related. <laughs> so you move with affection. You are responsible to your husband and responsible means to respond. To respond means to move with love and affection. Hey, why don't you do the practice? No, let me introduce you. No, I'm not ready. It's okay. When you are ready, oh, I'm responding. I'm not reacting. What is reaction? No, you have a lot of problems, you know. Why don't you go? Why don't you understand? I think I, I, think I finally, I finally, I was trying to control his happiness and make myself responsible for it, but I finally decided that that's not my job. That's, that's not your job. The moment your mind says this, you'll feel so much light. Yeah. Light. It doesn't mean that you are breaking the relationship. But why the mind feels you are breaking a relationship? Because you are not pushing. That is the way the society works. And that strains the relationship. Yeah. Huh? Because there are many factors in the mind of your honey. Come on, she is my wife. You know, why she is dictating me that you know, I'm not in peace? You know? When you express this, you don't know mm -hmm. what is happening there. What is happening? <clears throat> so you live into that state. I never pushed you. I inspired you. <laughs> I'm hoping that he sees how I am right now and that he, you know, yeah, yeah. he wants to change. <laughs> so I cover, so, so who am I? <clears throat> how to practice with the four steps that we should know? Are we there where mind looks, feels, thinks, and lives? I give you one example. What I say? I know Claudia. I'm pointing you. Right? And I forget I know. I know Claudia. So what happens? Our mind focuses completely and it forgets that the experience is happening in the mind. Experience, or I would say the knowledge of a person whose name is Claudia is a happening in my mind. So I play my role. Oh no, I know Claudia, but I'm aware that knowledge is happening in the mind. Now reverse this position. I forget myself. I know Claudia. Then what happens? <coughs> The mind will rush to the past experiences, the problems, the sufferings of the Claudia. And it will create an image about Claudia. 
and then the mind will react. That is what happens. You have created an image about your honey. You have created an image about your father. You have created an image about lot of people. So once you communicate without creating an image, the life becomes so easy. Life becomes so easy. I know the person A will react when I speak like this, so that is my knowledge. So now I know myself, let me, can I change the expression? Can I change my expression? <clears throat> Ask your honey, when you feel totally fatigued and tired, is this tiredness coming from the mind or the body? Are you doing the physical labor? You know, let us understand. Now you're moving totally in a different direction. You are addressing the same thing. So that idea is revealed in you. You need not to practice this. In America, we practice. But here, because you are evolving higher and higher, it comes by default. You know, whatever I speak, I focus, I create a session, and after that, I, it happens. Uh, the moment you touch the topic, and I'm covering based on that topic. So are we there where mind looks, feels, thinks, and lives? Oh, I'm in this studio, but I am. Knowledge is happening in the mind of an object, of a person, of a thing, of an event. So, can somebody help me live in peace, happiness, love and wisdom? No, including this guy. Only <laughs> you can help yourself if you have to learn from your experience. If you follow the principles, you change your mind you evolve your mind. That is the only way. You see that if I have a burden on my shoulder of 50 pounds, you can ease the burden, you can take 25 pounds. It's possible. I'm in debt, so maybe other people can help me. But if I'm in stress only, I can help myself. There is no other. There is no possibility. Just think and contemplate about this. Peace is not for sale. Happiness is not for sale. Why? Because peace and happiness are my essential nature. So that is the point uh, these masters are making. No one invites suffering in life and still it enters life because I'm not a seeker. That is why I don't understand. I'm not a seeker. The moment I'm a seeker, I'm fully aware that the peace is within me. Can I leave the world outside? So there is a very good proverb. Live, continue to live in the same world, but don't allow the world to live in you. <laughs> you see that? See yeah. the point? So no one, wise study of Eastern wisdom is essential in discovery of permanent peace and happiness. No, just giving. I have been talking a lot about it, so be 100% clear and uh, ask me any question related to it. Science works in the field of what is not me. Smartphone, recorder, landscaping, machines. So science works in the objective field. That is how it is understood, uh, in, a, in a very philosophical term. The science, science says go to Mars, go to Moon. Science never says go to yourself. Science fails to define who am I. Why? Because it is not working there. Why it is not working there? It is a subjective field. But it can work. But the moment the science wants to 
research who am I, it has to drop all the objective experimentation and protocol. I have done I have done research for the last, you know, six or seven years when I was in India on asthma. That's how I know I explain to you all those things. Mm -hmm. On asthma, on stress, on diabetes, and uh, on HIV. Patients, you know, how I can change their mind. So I understood that protocol because you have to bring, science says that bring everything outside. You have x-ray, now it is outside, huh? you see that. So it is objective area. So how we define it? It is non-self. So science has done a remarkable job in the objective field, which is the non-self. But when you ask the science, who am I? Tell me who am I? Science has no answer. So there is a parallel science goes on. That is what the Eastern wisdom. Its focus is who you are and what exactly is the world outside and how that real I relates to the world. Because the moment I relate to the world, only then I have the stress and the suffering. <laughs> you see that? Whether you relate to your house, my house is smaller than my neighbor's. You relate to your honey, you relate to your parents, you relate to your job, you relate to your body. So when I understand clearly, there is a clear understanding, this is word and this is me. So the moment the word starts affecting me, I said, hold on, I'm not you. Stress is gone. So there is a clarity in the Eastern wisdom, but it works totally in a different dimension. And that is what we have been learning. So we are going to... And what are the steps a seeker takes every day to succeed? Yes. So these 14 questions this week you have to work on. You ask the question. You read the question and uh, let your mind answer that question. You'll become... Your mind should be very clear. And then comes next week the big question. How a seeker approaching the teacher with the fourfold practices succeeds. That will start the first principle of the Eastern wisdom. So this I summarized and laid the background, but how to translate this into the practice and experience? How to translate all these 14 questions into a practice and experience? We will do it. Close, just like that. So while lying down, you may open your eyes, you will, we will do some practice and then we will contemplate and reflect and we will see how it works. It is going to be only one, eyes are closed. How fast you can go, just close your eyes, position of the body, it tells your level of awareness, but don't push the mind. Habitually, eyes are closed, position of the body, move the mind on the, all the joints of the body. At the same time as you move, you should know. What you should know? Experience in the mind. What is that experience in the mind? Sensation, being comfortable, and steadiness. Check how fast you can move. And that is the key. Move the mind inside the head. Look at the thought. Thoughts are going and coming, and instantly you are aware. Let the thought come and go. You are done with it. You don't care. The noise of the traffic coming and going, the thoughts moving into your mind. Maybe, you know, sometimes the mind plays a trick. And it says, no, this is a thought.
It is thought about honey. Why shouldn't I think? No. Let the thought come and go. Don't sit on a thought. The moment you sit on any thought, it will take you away from yourself. And you are natural. Now move the mind on the entire body. Entire body. We are checking whether we are progressing or not. Entire body from the top of the from the top to the bottom slowly, slowly, gently, and experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. And repeat. So when you repeat, you deepen the experience. Just check it. And if it happens, oh, what a journey it is. So you know, you can instantly, this is a, not only a withdrawal, but ready to act, not to react. And you know, when the mind continues to go back to the thought pattern that we have created in the past, sometime it will happen in the journey, or the body complains about the discomfort, purify the mind. But all that we will do it and check again the state of sensation, relaxation and stillness. So your mind is educated how to move into that state of sensation, relaxation and stillness. You move the mind gently on the entire body and if it doesn't happen then you move into the parts. That helps us to live within and that clearly makes the mind two-pointed. One-pointed, outside. Second-pointed, inside. That is why we still do nothing outside, let everything remain as it is. You are listening to me, you are in the studio, you are lying down. You know all these things, this is outside and you simply become aware of the breath. Aware of the breath. Or, depending on you, you can simply say Shantoha. Shantoha means I am the peace. I am the peace. Don't move your body, just open your eyes and continue Shantoha. We are facing the world outside living within normal blinking. We are not doing any practice. What is self-discovery? Uh, is there an enlightenment? Yes, there is. Can I take it? Can you take it? Yes, by becoming a seeker. Remember the next story, you live into that. You are living within, you are listening. And there is a natural contemplation and reflection going on by listening to me. There were ten students who crossed the river to meet a master. They crossed the river. They wanted to be sure that they all are, uh, everyone is intact. So the one person started counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, the tenth man. Where the tenth man is? The second guy also counted. Oh, there were nine people. And then they were depressed and they started crying. A monk was passing by. The monk realized the ignorance. And they said, okay, I will help you. Don't worry. So he hold the finger, index finger of one of the students and he said, now start counting. 
So he pointed his finger, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The index finger was pointing outside. And then he moved his index finger to himself. Here is the tenth. The story says, out of ten events, we forget who we are and that causes the suffering. Once you forget who we are, the mind takes over and it causes the suffering. That is the cause of the ignorance. You have already understood the four steps to know it. I don't know, so let me know it. So in that forgetfulness, we also forget ourselves and then we engage in unnecessary argument, right and wrong, pain and pleasure, reaction, good and bad, unwanted. It is not at all required in life. And that will happen to you when you contemplate. The second step, contemplate has two as aspects. Check your mind. Or do you have a conviction? And there is a freedom from the doubt. You are there. And then it comes to the practice. Practice. You learn from your experience and you continue the journey. Ask yourself when in peace or pressure, stress or silence, do I know myself? Don't start blaming and complaining others. Now why he is not listening, why she is not listening, I am right. Jesus was right, Confucius was right, he was poisoned, Buddha was right, he was stoned. Why to take pride in that I am right? We have to understand that. We have to separate the false from the real nature. Close your eyes again. Again check. No? Can I say it's a fast track? Uh, but in a different sense. The practice in a fast track, in a different sense to check. Is the mind now ready to become a seeker? <clears throat> In that, eyes are closed, position of the body, and you have an experience. <clears throat> you are learning from your experience. I'm just a catalyst. I'm a pointer. Virtually, I know that I'm not doing anything. If you don't do anything, nothing happens. So instantly the position of the body and you have a sensation in the entire body, everything is okay. What I said, be comfortable and your mind naturally moves to all the joints of the body and you experience being comfortable. Now what you do, you say mentally, being comfortable and move the mind on the joints at the same time and experience and experience sensation, comfortable and steadiness. You are learning from your experiences. Maybe second time. These practices are knowledge practices. We started with <coughs> clear understanding. Now being carefree, say mentally, looking inside the head, being carefree, free from who cares me and who cares, the habitual mind. Why? It brings in the thoughts. You see the point? When I am doing the practice, 
means you. Why the hell mind interferes? You know, that gives you a clue, being carefree. Let the thought come and go. And being natural. In the state of being comfortable, I added one more point, the position of the body, being comfortable, being carefree, being casual, the mind moves naturally to a natural state. That is the, that is the moment the contemplation and reflection works. The real contemplation works when you experience the sensation, relaxation and stillness in the body. I'll tell you why. So move the mind again on the entire body. You say to yourself, as if the body is objective to you, and definitely it is. You're te uh, educating the mind, move the mind on the entire body, experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. And you experience the change in the sensation, you are learning from your experiences. Every session I want you to become independent, directly or indirectly, but now I'm doing it directly, addressing you. You are becoming your teacher. That is another point in the, deeper in the journey. Move the mind once again. Say to yourself, address yourself. Move the mind on the head and the neck and you just name all those parts of the body. And at the same time, you experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. So we repeat, if we don't succeed in deepening the experience, and if we don't succeed even after repetition of seven times, ten times, oh, the mind deeper inside, of which I'm not aware, contains that impurity, it is pushing me into another direction. So what is the obvious step? Purifying the mind. So one is definitely quick and a fast breathing and the other is a silent way of hammering. So focus deep inside the forehead and the mantra is aiming me mentally, quick, fast and loud in your mind. You hear that the aim is very loud in your mind. It is very quick and fast. Continue. And see then what happens. Continue. Continue and see. And what is the main thing you don't allow? and leave it, leave hammering. Again move to the same, move the mind and the body. You say to yourself and you experience, you're learning from your own experience. So 
sensation, relaxation and stillness. Open your eyes slowly, stay there into that state. Remember the story of a ten man and you will find nine thoughts, feelings, sensations are coming from outside. Just remind, oh, tenth man, who is the tenth man? I am, and I forget myself. I count everyone. That is the nature of the mind. Let the mind face you. Why it does not face you? Because of the eight factors. Just to recall, help you recall, mentally you, you say after me the objects, that first factor, attachment or detachment, second factor, desire, third, confusion, fourth, loss of memory, five, loss of intelligence. Sixth, delusion. Seventh, stress and suffering eight. All these eight factors can be applied to your honey, your parents, your colleagues, your friends, your objects, your smartphone. But mind is not facing me. And the moment it faces you, you leave everything. You are learning from your experience. So the next question, are you there where mind looks, feels, thinks and lives? Am I there? No, I'm not there. It is the world outside, it is the relationship outside. And you will see, you will find out. Just maintain that awareness. It is the knowledge practice. I know you, but I point the finger to you. The mind moves with you. And the mind forgets I. It creates a false self. The false self becomes the real self. The false self lives with the eight factors. Eight factors move the mind outside. The mind moves with ignorance. Mind starts working on us. We are already suffering. We have started the suffering that will manifest in the future. That is such a beautiful journey. You are learning from your experience and what it takes. Pointer to you. Can somebody help me live in peace, happiness, love and wisdom? Ask this question and remain aware. That is one way. Oh, let me, let me answer this question with reference to honey. We are not going against anyone. We are improving, we are educating and evolving our mind. Can my honey help me live in peace, happiness, love and wisdom? Can money help me live in peace, happiness, wisdom? So that question needs to be answered during the day. Another question, 
I never invited stress in my life, but still the stress enters into my life. Do I know the answer? Eight factors, mind working on us, living into the false nature. See that, whether that, these thought vibrates in your head, it will change you entirely. And that is the answer why to study this Eastern wisdom, to discover permanent peace and happiness. Again, close your eyes. Now, in the third practice, mood position of the body is definitely, it is there. <coughs> You're doing good. Then, say to yourself, move the mind, mind, move on the entire, all the joints of the body and experience sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Just move it two or three times. Learn from your experiences. One, you become your mentor. Seeing mentally and experiencing Now being carefree, oh mind, be carefree, you say mentally and then experience that you are not at all caring any thoughts. Let it come, let it go. You may be having a deepening of the experience, the body also freezes down. Now there is no fear. It freezes down because it is helping the mind to move deeper within. I'm okay. You may feel extreme tingling, learning from your experience. being casual, being natural. There is another way to learn from your experience. Being natural means nothing to go, nowhere to go, nothing to think. Whatever is happening, there is a natural, total acceptance. You should experience that acceptance. Then, second step, you see it mentally, uh, move the mind on the head and the neck, the major parts of the body. The moment you say, mind move to the head and the neck, the next moment is your experience, sensation, relaxation and stillness. Just do it by yourself. You say it mentally, oh, mind move on the right arm. This is will help you to discover what exactly is contemplation. Contemplation is very uh, simply defined in the science, modern psychology, and but in Eastern wisdom it is very, very deep. Just continue with the major parts of the body. And then, and then, and her body.
to know it. Now we move to the state of contemplation. Contemplation doesn't happen without the principle. Principle, let us take one piece and happiness are my essential nature. Do I know it? No, I just, let me understand that principle. Peace and happiness are my essential nature. So, next question, but that essential, if it is essential nature, I don't live in permanent peace and happiness. Why? Because of the eight factors, because the mind is working on us, because the mind created a superficial nature. And that superficial nature contains an impurity, the false identity that causes the suffering. So peace and happiness hides behind the mind you know, we are contemplating. So our focus still is there on the principle. Peace is my essential nature. So the obvious question comes, if I remove this impurity and if, the, if I start working on the mind, or let us start, start doing it. So the moment we start working on the mind, the stress and the suffering will never enter into my life as unwanted guests. That is what I experienced in the state of sensation, relaxation and stillness. That is what I experience when I purify the mind. You're contemplating. And through that contemplation, another part of the contemplation is reflection. Just look inside. You are with yourself, no worries, no stress. We may experience a freedom from the doubt, leaves the mind free. And that is the point where you start working on the mind. Now after contemplation, reflection, what to do? Just let us see into the experience. The breath goes in, drop shantoham. Breath comes out, drop shantoham. So now you are aware of the world outside. At the same time, the mind is also living within. Two-pointed mind. You may experience a sense of calmness and quietness as if you are too far from the world outside. and gently open your eyes. Continue to experience that state. <clears throat> what are the steps a seeker takes every day to succeed? One is learning from your experiences. We've moved from one experience to the other, every moment. Learning the principles of Eastern wisdom, contemplation and reflection on these principles with reference to one's own life, attitude, habit, problems. Another point, regular practice with wisdom. 
insight and experiences after the practice or during the practice. So we are awakening to deep insight and in our experiences deepens. So what the journey looks like, we have to continue the journey until awakening and realization. So when I say regular practice, it's a passive practice. Here with your colleague, you step back and the mind mood within and you start working on the mind. Active practice that we have introduced a lot of practices. That will help you to evolve, move to the fourth state. Um, shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Um, shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand. Now you can immediately feel those sensations. Bring your mind to the left hand. Raise both your palms. Place it on your eyes. This time the eyes are open. And you put it on your eyes. There is a total darkness inside. And check how the mind is responding. Bring the hands down and sit up. 